What's up guys, it's Susie Bullock from HeyGrillHey.com and if you're watching this video, it means we already have something in common, probably the most important thing. We both love good barbecue and that's perfect because here at Hey Grill Hey, my whole goal is to help you make better barbecue so you can feed the people you love and become a backyard barbecue hero. Today, I'm showing you how to make my Texas style smoked beef brisket. Let's do it. Now, I know a piece of meat this size can seem pretty intimidating, but don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through it in six easy steps. Trim, season, smoke, wrap, rest, and slice. Easy, right? Let's get started. Now, every piece of meat is a little bit different, but for a brisket this size, about 12 to 14 pounds, you can plan 15 to 16 hours for cooking. So you're gonna need about 30 minutes of prep time, at least 15 hours to smoke, and then an hour to rest. A long cook like this one, especially with a brisket, you gotta plan a little bit in advance. So what I typically do is trim and season, put it on the smoker late at night, right before we go to bed, and then I'm usually ready for the next step when we wake up first thing in the morning. Let's get started. Our ingredients list for this is really short. You need a 12 to 14 pound whole packer brisket. That means you have the flat and the point. It's gonna look about like this a bunch of your favorite beef seasoning. I'm using my beef seasoning you can buy in the store, or if you'd like to go homemade, you can use equal parts of kosher salt, coarse black pepper, and garlic powder. So let's get started. Step one, we gotta trim. So my first step when I trim a brisket is to remove any excess fat and silver skin. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's important to remove a lot of this excess fat because it's gonna block the seasoning from having access to your meat which will impact the flavor and the bark at the end. Looking good so far. All right, next we wanna get rid of these big pieces of hard fat. They're not gonna cook down during the cooking process and they're gonna make our brisket not very aerodynamic in the smoker. You really want the smoke to be able to circulate evenly around your brisket while it's cooking. So you don't want any big pieces that are hanging off or creating sharp corners. Just want it to be nice and smooth. Next, we're just gonna run our knife along the side of the brisket, just taking off that outside edge. So we get a nice clean line. And in an effort to reduce all those sharp corners, we're just gonna take each corner off the bottom of the flat. There's not much meat on these corners and they'll just dry up and turn really crispy and crusty on the grill. So it's okay to get rid of them. All right. Back side of our brisket looks good. Time to flip it over and do the top. Our goal with the top of the brisket is to get this fat as even as possible. So we wanna trim it down to about a quarter inch thickness all the way across the top. Two things to help this process go more quickly and easily is having a really sharp knife. I like a six to seven inch filet or boning knife and making sure your brisket is cold. Cause if this fat warms up, it's actually a lot harder to cut through and it becomes slippery. Another great thing about cold brisket is that it actually takes on smoke a lot better. Smoke particles are attracted to cold things. So a chilled brisket hitting the smoker will mean more smoke flavor in your meat. This looks really nice. We have a nice even layer of fat on the top and a nice uniform aerodynamic shape in our brisket. That means we're ready for step two. It's time to season. Grab your favorite seasoning. I like to use something with a shaker lid. It makes getting the seasoning on a lot easier. You wanna hold your bottle about 10 to 12 inches above your meat and just shake it on there. You want a nice, even coating. You can technically over season, but don't be afraid of being generous. This is a really thick cut. And the seasoning on the outside of our brisket with this coarse salt and pepper will help create a nice crunchy crust on the outside during the smoking process. Once your seasoning is sprinkled evenly across the top of your brisket, use the palm of your hand and just press it on in there. You don't want any loose seasoning to fall off when you flip your brisket over. <laughs> I call this the Susie sprinkle and slap. Fill in any areas that look like they need a little more seasoning and then flip it over, season the other side. I've cooked a lot of different briskets using a lot of different styles and techniques, but the one we come back to time and time again is this Texas style brisket. It's because it's so simple and it really delivers on that down home, backyard, 
brisket flavor. It's a classic. It's not complicated. It's not fussy. It doesn't require a ton of extra steps or injections or marinades or mops, but it really delivers on flavor. This looks Perfect, we're ready to take it out to the smoker. I've got it preheated outside to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Classic Texas wood is oak. I've mixed mine with a little bit of cherry. Ready to go. I'm gonna put this brisket in, fat cap up, close the lid, let this smoke for about the next eight hours. We're looking for an internal temperature of 165 degrees in the thickest part of the point. We're gonna be wrapping our brisket in butcher paper. This is often called peach butcher paper or pink butcher paper. It's an unwaxed, untreated paper that allows the moisture to stay in with the brisket, but it also still allows smoke to go through and penetrate the meat. Just roll out two long sheets. And overlap them in the middle. Now I've got another brisket in here that I've been smoking for eight hours so I can show you guys what you're looking for when this hits 165 degrees. Before you wrap, you wanna make sure that your bark is really nice and developed. So when you scratch at it, it's not really gonna come off. You've just got some nice color in there. The bark looks perfect. I also wanna check the temperature. I wanna make sure that the thickest part of this meat is reading about 165 degrees Fahrenheit and we're right there. So this is ready to come off onto our butcher paper and wrap. Grab your brisket, place it in the center of your two pieces of butcher paper, not quite all the way to the end. Fold up this side. And then fold the end. So once you have your brisket mostly covered, you're gonna fold it over on top of itself. And then pull it back to create a nice tight wrap. You don't want a lot of air pockets in here. And then continue folding. Now, when we first put our brisket on the smoker, we put it on fat side up. This time we would have put it back on fat side down. Close the lid and we don't touch it again until our brisket is done. We're looking for an internal temperature of 202 degrees Fahrenheit. This is gonna take another six or seven hours. We're about 15 hours in on our brisket cook. It's time to check the temperature of our brisket. We're looking for 202 degrees Fahrenheit in the thickest part of the point. Oh, there we go. Our temperature is right at 202 degrees Fahrenheit. And just as important as temperature is the texture of our brisket. You want your thermometer probe to slide into that meat like it's sliding into a stick of softened butter. That'll mean all of that fat has rendered and all of those tight connective tissues has gelatinized. You're gonna have a really tender, soft, melt in your mouth brisket. This one's ready to come off the smoker. Now you can pull this off, set it on the counter, and let it rest for 45 minutes to an hour if you're ready to eat right away. If your brisket is done a little bit early, pull it off of your smoker and let it rest in a cooler with a towel. This will help keep your brisket really moist and it'll let that resting temperature hold for a little bit longer so it's ready to serve when you're ready to eat. We're gonna see this brisket in about an hour. We have trimmed, we have seasoned, we have smoked, we have wrapped, we have rested. It's time to talk about slicing this brisket. Let's open it up and see what we've got. Oh, it is a juicy one. This brisket looks amazing. The bark on the outside is nice and dark and caramelized and crispy. It smells beautiful and you've got this nice little brisket jiggle. That means that a lot of that fat has rendered down and the muscle tissues are super tender. A brisket is made up of two overlapping muscle structures and the grain runs in different directions. So it's important you know how to slice this because if you slice it wrong, it's 20 hours of smoke down the drain, you're gonna end up with really chewy rubber bands instead of nice tender melt in your mouth meat. So here's how you do it. Take your knife, 
and slice almost directly down the middle of your brisket. Oh, that's nice. That's a juicy brisket. This brisket is so juicy. It has a beautiful smoke ring around the outside. And then you're gonna to wanna to turn the point of your brisket. So our flat over here is gonna be sliced straight across. What the what? It's in your knife, guys. Into slices that are about as thick as a pencil. These thin slices against the grain in the flat are gonna be nice and uniform and they're gonna pull apart so easily. Just be careful when you're slicing. Your hands can get slippery from all the brisket juice. Make sure you use a long, sharp knife. As we get closer to the point, you can see where the grain starts to change and there's a fat layer in between the flat and the point that starts to shift a little bit. That's when you know it's time to turn your brisket point 90 degrees and start slicing that against the grain. I always take off these edge pieces and just cut them into little nuggets. These are the burnt ends and this is Todd's favorite. So I always save these nice fatty, crusty, barky pieces for us to eat. We love making brisket when we have a bunch of people coming over to our house. It's always a crowd pleaser. It feeds a bunch of people and everybody likes brisket. <laughs> brisket is typically a really tough cut of meat, but when you slow smoke it at a low temperature, it just becomes soft and melts in your mouth, almost falls apart. Did you say burn ends for Todd? <laughs> That's like perfect timing. Texas style, you gotta serve it on butcher paper. What I like to do is arrange pieces of the flat on one side so that people who like the leaner slices of brisket can get what they like. And then I bring on those nice fatty pieces of brisket. And just run those right up the center. And then any little pockets I have left, I fill with these pieces of burn ends. All right. I'm you, ready. Can I go for it? I think you get to taste it now. I want this one. Yeah, I saved these little burn end pieces for you and me. I call these the pit master's privilege. <laughs> oh, yep. That's the brisket hug right there. <laughs> mm. Oh, these are so good. That seasoning on the outside gives it the perfect amount of salt, black pepper. Wow. You can taste that oak smoke. This is the king of all Smoked things. meats, ma'am. Yeah. It looks like mm. Texas, smells like Texas, tastes like Texas. I think we got a Texas style brisket, babe. I think we did it. Mm. I hope you smoke this brisket and take it somewhere awesome also. When you do, leave a comment. Let us know how this recipe turned out for you. Better yet, snap a photo, post it online, use the hashtag HeyGrillHey. That way Todd and I can see it and cheer you on on your way to becoming a backyard barbecue hero. See you next time. Happy brisket. So good, man. Mm -hmm. The best.